Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is a great day in the history of uh, BCC uh, as we open and unveil a uh, center uh, devoted uh, to our veterans, and we thank them for their service, and this is a, uh, a way that the college can support them as they come through uh, the academic pro process here at BCC and go elsewhere. Um, uh, now, w this center will include uh, counseling services, which are different for those of you in the outside world, counseling services as well as academic advising uh, services. Uh, and uh, we would provide uh, any help in uh, job placement or job preparation for job placement, or resume building, interview skills, uh, those kinds of activities. Uh, you know, the veterans are a, uh, always considered, and rightfully so, I guess, but they're kind of a subgroup in the society, and uh, they need a place uh, uh, to reinforce each other's positions, uh, especially in a new environment uh, at, in academic affairs. You know, it's, uh, one thing that has always amazed me as a veteran myself uh, the military world is full of acronyms and confusing terms. Uh, and I was surprised uh, myself when I came back on a campus and when I see the veterans come back, they're used to these acronyms, they're used to this uh, language, but the academic language throws them for a loop. I mean, they just don't know what the world we're talking about in academics. And it is a, a language uh, foreign uh, to itself. Uh, so we're here to provide any support we can uh, for, the, uh, for the veterans and for their families uh, because that's a, a very important part of what we, uh, what we provide. Uh, I did want to call attention uh, to uh, some people who are here uh, and you might, you'll hear from some of them a little bit later, but I wanted to uh, mention that uh, Representative Carol Fiola is here. Carol Fiola. Representative Alan Sylvia is here. And Representative Paul Schmidt is here. I should add that Senator Mike Rodericks is uh, unable to be with us because of uh, activities up on the hill in, the, in, the, in Boston. Uh, but he sends his regards and has been very supportive for our veterans, as have the three representatives from our area. I also want to point out a, a couple of uh, distinguished people here. Uh, James Gagnon is the commander of the Disabled American Vets. Uh, there he is. And, and a BCC alumnus. Uh, a BCC alumnus. Thank you, Jim. Jim Reed is here at a Veterans Transition House in, um, in New Bedford. Jim, there he is. Thank you, Jim. And the program director at the Veterans Transition House, Susan Fontenot-Decor. Sorry. And we have from the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs, Cheryl De Belisle. Cheryl, there, Cheryl. Okay. So we're very, uh, very happy to welcome uh, all of you uh, so integrated into the services for veterans. And this is yet another milestone in that, in that regard. Uh, point out another couple of things for you uh, on 21 November, Saturday, there will be a, a Veterans Expo uh, with services and community uh, uh, activities that uh, serve the veterans and uh, we're expecting a big crowd from uh, 10 o'clock till 2.30 I believe it is here at the, at the campus. Uh, also, um, we have uh, webinars. The American Council on Education is providing webinars specifically focused on veterans affairs and there's one on November 12th on the Warrior Scholar Project uh, which enables colleges and university faculty and administrators to learn more about uh, the support that the American Council on Education is like the uh, prime education spokes voice uh, for uh, all, all affairs education in the country, uh, but certainly for veteran affairs as well. And uh, finally, I wanted to point out that uh, in the state capitol, uh, our state capitol, there, are, um, there is some legislation uh, designed uh, to um, 
I guess, protect veterans uh, when you talk about a stolen valor bill. There's a stolen val valor bill that the legislators will be just uh, considering. And believe it or not, that uh, uh, refers to a fairly widespread, surprisingly widespread uh, uh, movement. It's really across the country that uh, where people claim to be veterans and are not and uh, take advantage of uh, whatever that means by being a veteran, uh, the services and uh, uh, I guess a profile in the neighborhood or whatever it is. But uh, so stolen valor, you're gonna hear more about that uh, in the months to come as the legislature uh, considers uh, uh, some, dr some really strong penalties for this, uh, at least under consideration. Um, so uh, you've heard enough from me. Uh, uh, it's, this is a long time coming. When I first arrived in 2000, uh, uh, I talked to some people about starting a veteran center. We have um, uh, a minimum amount of space available. Uh, we have a minimum amount of dollars available. But we uh, wanted to press forward uh, now uh, before waiting any longer. Uh, we've waited too long as it is. So what you're going to see uh, when we go upstairs is, uh, is a modest uh, a modest center, but it is reserved for our, our veterans, and it is something that we are uh, very proud of. Uh, you may have noticed as you came in that a new building is being built, and as, uh, as people move around and into the new building, we're hoping to free up some space for a, uh, a larger veteran center, it's so badly needed. It's important in this building, for those of you who don't know, but it's a, good, it's a wonderful location because it is adjacent to our enrollment center, uh, financial aid, advising, admissions, uh, the registrar, uh, all, of, uh, all of the various activities that our veterans need to uh, access. So we're very proud, A, that it's in G building here, and B, that we even have it at the college after so many years of struggle. And now uh, it's my honor to introduce to you uh, another veteran, uh, Vietnam veteran, the chair of our board of uh, trustees, Joseph Marshall. Joseph. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, everything Jack said. No, no, really. Um, as chairman of the board of trustees, we have, uh, we don't just meet, honestly. We, uh, we have uh, brainstorming sessions. We, we find out, and with the, with the help of Steve and, and the rest of the faculty, what the needs are of the school. And this just jumped out at us uh, about a year ago. And um, with the help of the representatives and the senator, who was not here, um, it, 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 just, it just came to, it, actually it took so many years and then it came together very, very quickly. And all it took was the initiative, uh, the hard work, and uh, and the belief that the need was there. And we know the needs here. And as I was telling Representative uh, Sylvia earlier today, I, I look at this as just being the beginning. Uh, we kind of put this together on a shoestring, and we're hoping going forward we can provide more services, uh, more counseling, uh, better, better services for the, for the veterans. And they are, a, they are a group that required. I can remember myself in 68, uh, coming back and kind of wandering around, you know, what should I do? And I just kind of fell here. But um, there's more to it than that, and there's more to it to, than uh, with any of the veterans here. There's a reason uh, that you seek a higher education and a better life. So we want to offer that. We want to make that available to them. Uh, and we just hope it becomes the, the biggest unit here on the campus. Yes. So I appreciate that. Now, with that in mind, uh, I'd like to, to ask, if you don't mind, Alan, uh, Alan Sylvia, Representative Sil Sylvia, Representative Schmidt, and Representative Fiola, if they could come up and say a few words, please. Thank you. In no particular order. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to see so many people here, and uh, it's exciting for me as uh, Vice Chair of uh, the Joint Committee on Veterans to, uh, to be here. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, President Sprager and, and uh, Joe Marshall um, several months ago now uh, to talk about uh, funding for a vet center because there's no earmarked funding for a vet center. And we find that 
Although we do so much in Massachusetts for veterans, there's no other state uh, in the country that does more for veterans than Massachusetts. Uh, it is so easy uh, for us to go forward to move bills on the floor for legislation for veterans until we start asking for money. And then suddenly, uh, there's uh, a little bit of a little breakage going on. But um, I've already started the process of looking into funding uh, because although there are some, uh, some community colleges that have been funded for uh, vet centers, some have not. Bristol Community College has not. And uh, that's where I and we come in to uh, make sure that that happens in the, in the near future. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Tomorrow, as was mentioned by Dr. Sprager, Stolen Valor, uh, we'll be voting on that tomorrow. And another bill, uh, believe it or not, the other bill that we're voting on is uh, one uh, that has had some, uh, some information has already been uh, received out there, but people actually steal those metal bronze uh, markers, medallions that are on grave sites from that are on veterans' grave sites. Korean War veterans, World War II War veterans, World War I War veterans have them. Uh, they're metal medallions that sit on those, uh, on those grave sites. And people have been stealing them from gravestones and been melting them down and uh, selling the scrap metal. So tomorrow we'll be uh, taking that up to make that a crime in Massachusetts. Uh, and not only those who, who uh, take those uh, metal uh, commemorative markers, but also uh, those who purchase them, so that those people who, uh, companies that purchase the, uh, the metal would be responsible as well. So um, we're dealing with that uh, tomorrow, but there's, uh, just to touch on one other thing regarding veterans. It's a unique group, as Dr. Sprager mentioned, the uniqueness is that many of these veterans come to school after serving their country. They're usually older. And because of that, many of them, because they're not often in a group of other veterans, drop out. High percentage of veterans drop out after coming to community college. And most of them the first place they go is community college. So if there's no active veteran center, the probability of them dropping out is much greater than if there is. So that's why it is so important that we do all we can for our veterans and how fitting that we do this just prior to Veterans Day. So thank you and thank you uh, all for being here and to make this happen for our, our veterans, thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Chairman Sylvia. Look, uh, it's really easy for your Fall River delegation, ourselves and Senator Rodericks, it's really easy for us to advocate for BCC because by most metrics, BCC ranks at the very top of our community colleges in Massachusetts. Congratulations to Jack <laughs> and to all of you. The only, the only place that they don't rank, that you don't rank at the top, is the help per student that you get from the state. And that is for historical reasons. And believe me, we're doing our best to slowly bring you back to prior, uh, parity. This project is a good example of how BCC excels. And I take my hat off uh, to our leadership, Joe and Jack, for what you're doing now. Uh, and believe me, we'll be out there fighting this budget season to get this thing better funding. Thank you very much. Jack and Joe and all of you from BCC, it's an honor to be here. As my colleague said, I get the great honor of working with 
two veterans in the house right here. Uh, so uh, it, it always keeps that to the front of my mind as we're voting and as we're working uh, the halls of Beacon Hill. Um, before I talk about BCC, I'd like to also acknowledge that having this center here allows even more coordination with the great programs that are already happening in Fall River. We have the Bristol County <coughs> Veterans Center Association on Pine Street in Fall River. I see Raymond LeBoy. Ray, where are you? Right here. And he is going to be a great person to network with this uh, center because veterans who may not first walk in this door will work, walk in uh, Ray's door. And uh, I see that firsthand on a very frequent basis. And uh, I know Ray will be bringing those veterans and sending them this way if they're not already uh, and giving them that comfort and uh, uh, camaraderie that they so need and want. Um, I also know that our veterans office in Fall River is uh, pretty much the best in the state, not just by my words, but words uh, throughout this Commonwealth. And Ray Haig does a marvelous job. and he too will be a partner with everyone here at BCC. Uh, but Jack and Joe, it's no wonder that this center is here today because BCC continues to be at the forefront of every need in this community, whether it's career and work readiness, whether it's preparing our high school students for college readiness, uh, and all of the other programs that you offer, you're right there on the cutting edge, making sure our community is prepared. And this is another stellar example of that, and no better example than our veterans who require every ounce of what we can give them. And so I'm honored to be here today before Veterans Day with my colleagues and all of you, and assuredly we will continue to fight not only for our veterans, but for BCC. Thank you, Jack and Joe. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of fitting that today is uh, voting day, election day, uh, and uh, the service that uh, people have rendered over the years, uh, just so we would have the right to, uh, to vote. And uh, I'm sure tomorrow morning you're going to be disappointed, not in the uh, whoever wins, but in the turnout, the amount of people who take advantage of this hard-won liberty to vote. And uh, it's something that everyone on all parties and all sides want to, uh, want to promote, is to expand the, uh, the election turnout, okay? Uh, so I also wanted to uh, point out to you some of our major officers at the college who have uh, worked on veteran affairs, uh, and I can't, I'm gonna miss someone, I'm sure, but we start with Vice President Steve Ozog, uh, and... Uh, Standing next to him is Beth Vizina, Transfer Veterans Counselor. Carrie LePage is here somewhere. There, there she is. Okay. Uh, Robin Gallant is upstairs uh, watching the center, make sure it's okay, it's still up there. And uh, I'm missing somebody, and it's Michael Bensaint. There's Michael, uh, our counselor. But, but yeah, after having named those relatively few names, and I, I'm very grateful to them for their leadership, and this would not have happened without those individuals, I want to acknowledge our whole BCC family because everybody has stepped up uh, to make this happen as they do with all things at BCC and the great successes that we've had. So I, I thank you all for all that you do and continue to do for all of our students, not just uh, particular groups, but especially for the veterans. Uh, we're about to, ready to go upstairs. I have to tell you a veteran story, unfortunately. Uh, no. uh, but you know uh, uh, Reverend Robert uh, Lawrence. Next week, he is going, uh, uh, December 7th, he's going out uh, to the Arizona Memorial in Pearl Harbor. And uh, he's doing that to inter the ashes of uh, one of the last living veterans uh, uh, just deceased, 92 years young, and the veteran uh, made known his wish to be buried with his comrades in the uh, Arizona. So, uh, <laughs> Reverend Lawrence was just telling me about this. He's going to provide the uh, urn to uh, Navy divers, and they're going to take the urn and uh, submerge themselves to the Arizona, open a trap uh, door, and uh, and let this gentleman rest with his colleagues in arms. So that's just too moving a story uh, to, not to repeat to you. And veterans, you know, I, I would say for the most part, veterans do not, uh, they don't serve uh, to be honored or to be recognized. They serve because it's service to the country. 
it's uh, people outside in the community uh, uh, that uh, honor them and share their uh, uh, grace and their experience and thank them for it and thank them for all that they've done in preserving the right to vote such as today. So uh, well, all the veterans, I thank you for your service and uh, we're going to continue to uh, pay tribute to our veterans and a lasting uh, tribute uh, through our Veterans Center. I hope, actually I hope that it doesn't stay up there very long, that we have a much bigger uh, a spacious and accommodating center uh, in the future, but as Chairman Marshall said, let's get started, let's get done. So I would invite you to join us for this open house. Uh, there is a stairway on either side here in the red doors, there's an elevator uh, back there, and the Veterans Center is located uh, on the second floor, right opposite the podium here. And I thank you very much for attending, and. Uh, I hope you enjoy the center as much as we've enjoyed trying to put it together. Thank you very much.